So you're all familiar with how this works. How you can just go to the main page, say play against the machine, and just start up a game. Um, and that plays you against Stockfish level 8. Or whatever level you selected. Here, I'm trying to get it to play against Stockfish. You know, the player that uses computer assistance. Well, I mean, that's kind of evident, you know? Because um, I don't think this AI level 8 really adds much descriptive-wise. Um, I mean, okay, you can create accounts, I guess, and call them Stockfish 1, Stockfish 2, and all this, but... Um, so, like, when I play move here, it responds. Or, better yet, to get an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, it'll play a move. It plays E4. Here, it hasn't played anything yet. Now, why are these screens different? Why is this one indented to the right relative to that one? That must be something really weird with my user style. Let me turn my user style off. Alright, so... Are these positioned the same? No, they're still different. Oh, I see. We have a history section down here. That's why the indentation's different. Okay, so let's put the user style back on. Hmm. I'll have to think about that one. Is there any better way I can show... I mean, why not put the player history, like, down here? Or, well, I guess captured pieces go there. There's got to be some better place to put it. Or at least some way that I can get this to work where it doesn't show the scroll bar if we don't need it. Whereas, I guess here, playing against the engine, I don't see any history. So again, this is something that's different. Not right or wrong, but it's just different. and takes a little adjusting, too. Um, Alright. Well, so I have to figure out how it is that E4 gets played here, and how it is that I can get that same mechanism to work from this kind of play environment. Um... To that end, uh, let's begin. Um, so I know there's a module called AI. And so let me take a look at just some of its inner workings. In fact, no, I was looking at the controllers. I was taking a look at this earlier. App controllers AI.scala. Okay. There's this object called AI. It extends Leela controller and basically tells the AI thing what sort of um, variant we need the AI to play something in. Um, that shouldn't say Stockfish. That should just say like engine or AI server or something because. Uh, you know, long term, maybe we don't want to be just limited to stockfish. I don't know. That's really long term, though. In the short term, let's just get this working. Um, so I have to figure out... Okay, so if there's if anything outside this package uses AI, it'll import AI. Uh, if anything inside this package uses AI, I should be able to do grep w ai star. Um, sorry, let me change directory and try that again. Okay, so we see that AI is used there. But that's the extent of it. Um, so... Oh, this is going to get ugly. Um, let's see, are there any Scala files that use AI? Yes, there are. There sure are. Okay. Uh, I'm not so interested in the target 
directory because that's just deployed code. Um, I, I might fall back on that as a last resort. Like I see there is this thing called routes.scala. Um, but I don't expect that to be, I don't know, informative. I guess I could take a little, well, now let's start with what seems to make most sense here, which is modules slash, well there's setup and then there's game. Let me take a look quickly at um, this. I really don't expect it to make one bit of a difference, but uh, let's see, where do we use AI here? Source.ai. So, <laughs> um, so I have to figure out what's the difference here, source.position versus source.ai. Or at least I want to figure that out before I dive too deep into um, that other module into the game module. I want to take a quick look at this, just doing some um, breadth first search as opposed to depth first search. Hey Chief, welcome. Yeah, one of the outcomes of this development, if I do it and it's all successful, is that um, maybe we could do some regression testing and AI versus AI testing and try out some of your ideas versus some of my own and see how they all work out. That's kind of the hope. So I haven't forgotten about the whole horde change. Um, it's just this might help me um, in some way uh, facilitate testing uh, my own changes versus your suggested changes. Um, I did manage to fix that one bug where the evaluation was outside of the negative infinity, positive infinity window. Uh, I fixed that by assuming that if a player lacks a king, that the distance um, of the king to blocking an opposing pawn uh, for purposes of promotion, that distance is just assumed to be a constant 5. Just because... Um, Five seemed like a good guess as any as to um, some kind of weight for how distant a king is from stopping a pawn in general. Maybe a number other than five's better, but at least I fixed the positive infinity, negative infinity window thing. So that's why I focus on this next is um, be nice to get some AI versus AI testing. And frankly, I would prefer to be able to do human versus AI um, contests and see how they all rate and everything. There are plenty of chess servers where that's acceptable. Lee Chess isn't exactly warm to the idea, but I think if it's successful on here and everybody likes it, then maybe they'll um, be more warm to it on the actual site. Uh, so I'm just taking a look at this file here, this setup.scala, I think, or sorry, aiconfig.scala inside the setup package. And I'm trying to figure out where it says source is equal to either position or to AI. What does that mean? Like, I get that you might want to have a variant. Oh, okay, maybe source is the thing that sets up the board. Yeah, I like to think it's genius, although really it borrows a lot from what other chess servers used to do. So it's not that original. Um, I do like the very object-oriented nature of it, and that uh, people or humans are chess players, AIs are chess players, and we can all operate under the same rating space. Um, Obviously, on leaderboards, people would prefer to see humans uh, than to see computers, so whatever. 
we can suppress um, computer ratings or engine ratings um, from various leaderboards. We can prevent engines from playing in tournaments. We can do all sorts of things related to that just based on people's comfort zone. Um, but I think in terms of at least rating the games, AIs should be able to have their own ratings. There's no reason not to. Well, there are reasons, but those reasons don't apply. Those reasons are more for defective code use cases where an engine has a bug and it causes points to get redistributed among the rating pool in a way that doesn't make any sense because somebody just repeatedly uh, hacks away and beats it over and over with the same bug. Um, some people call that an exploit, but I don't think that that's a serious issue. Uh, or I think that that's an easily addressed issue. Plus the AI is getting very strong and I'm introducing opening books and endgame tables and such so that's not going to happen very often. So, anyhow, I think source refers to um, whether or not, or, well, I don't know, let me take a look at what source is. Rather than guessing, there's this thing, leila.game.source. And it's got two constants that are position and AI. Let me take a look at that. Um, so, modules, game, source, main, source. Okay, so there's AI and there's position. Um, right? There's position here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. ID equals 6. Uh, I think that's just an identifier for where did this game come from. I'm a little confused as to why that matters. Um, as in, if you're... Okay, well, I guess for crediting, when somebody wins the game, I guess you don't want to rate it the same way if they started from some bogus position. You wouldn't want to rate that the same way as if they're just playing a normal AI game. So I guess that makes sense. Um, that if you're playing from position, you just want to uh, not rate it or not classify that the same way as if you're just playing a normal AI game. It makes a lot of sense for searching the games later as well. Uh, so as I was explaining earlier, I found this AI object. I guess they call these things objects and not classes. I'll start calling them objects. Uh, anyhow, in Scala I found this AI object, which I think is responsible for gameplay. Um, so, yeah, this asynchronously sends out some message to the AI server telling it, you know, buddy, it's time to make a move. Um, uh, I'm a bit curious how it um, how it knows which game needs to move on. Okay, so we got this thing called move. Oh, that's just a function. And it returns a result, but that has to happen in some context. Like one possible context, I guess, is an analysis, where we just tell it to analyze... Um, yeah. But what I'm a bit stumped on is how does the value get returned out of this function? Okay, so we're defining move is equal to an asynchronous action fold. Um, okay, so if we have an error, return the error, else return 
whether or not the move was okay. Um, and possibly returns the move itself as part of that function. Um, actually, this must be an assignment operator, right? I don't know. Anyhow, this value does get propagated back to the appropriate game context. And so I want to use the same controller, not just for... Um, oh, okay. I'll see you in just a minute. So I want to use the same thing, um, not just for analysis, but also for playing games. Um, so, so, so... Oh. That's what that was. That's where AI was defined here. Um, hmm. actually makes the request to the AI server. Um, uh, is it all HTTP based? I'm actually going to look at this. seems more than a bit weird. Um, that doesn't seem necessary, though. Try a little bit different search here. Just search the whole damn project. Um, that looks useful. It's a little too much information. Okay, so there are a lot of class files, there are a lot of images and assets. Um, let's try a more limited search. Okay, there's the app directory, there's the modules directory. Um, let's see, what else? What makes this sorcery work here? Like as soon as I make a move, it makes a move back. Somehow, somewhere, um, what was this? App controllers, AI.scala. Is this method here, move, is getting called? I could just change the name of this method and see, like, what happens. Like, what fails to compile if I change this? Obviously, the routes file won't work, but. Um, oh wait, there was one other thing I was able to do here last time. Let me do that here again. I can, um, let's see, what was it called? I think it was called, oops, this is a read-only file. Let me open it up in read-write mode. I think it was thread dot uh, there's 
like a one in four chance I got that right. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure I got that wrong. It's either dump track, dump stack, or dump trace, or stack trace, or stack dump, or something. Stack trace thread. Google knows what I mean when I typo. Dump stack. There we go. That's exactly what I was looking for. At least I got the dump part right. Okay, so once that compiles, um, welcome back. I'm just doing a little bit of investigation here to figure out how this magic works. Um, some would call this reverse engineering. They would be correct in calling that that. Um, so, oops, well that's no good. Okay. Apparently, um, let's see, how is this going to work? Um, hmm. So I'm guessing I can't put that first. I need to... Uh, if I'm going to add some extra code, it needs to be after the parameter name. Let's try that again. Also, I don't understand, like, do I ever need semicolons in Scala? I think it's a useful delimiter, but maybe it's just completely unnecessary. Yeah, you're right. I'm one second ahead of you here. Um... I'm learning functional programming. Zug can say all he wants to say about trying to learn Scala. I'm actually learning it. Um, so anyhow, when I make that move, I should see something logged here. Uh, So I think this is, yeah, I'm just tailing all the log files to see what gets printed out and when. Things recompiled and are redeploying. At least I see they are. Um, oh, it's my turn. Oh, it's my turn. It's my turn. Wow. It definitely let me know whose turn it was. Okay. Oh, that's unfortunate. Um, output didn't get dumped over here. What's the IRC chef or leech us? Oh, it's at free node. So just go over to free node and join um, the leech us channel there. If indeed you did find a significant bug, and I'll take you at your word for it. Um, Okay, so the log doesn't contain the stack, but my console over here does have it. Um, so this is initiated through play framework. Um, don't know how play framework is configured, but at least now I know Controllers AI. So, uh, I know that this line of code, this line 16 here, is called by the play framework. So, yeah, if I want this same code to get executed um, from other contexts, I've got to find ways to make that happen. I've got to learn not just Scala. Not just MongoDB and all these other things and Stockfish, but I gotta learn Play Framework now. 
That's the next logical step. Uh, journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Alright, so, the whole deal with lag. Lag messages are sent over the client. Oh. Yeah, I think that kind of vector is not anything original. Um, yeah. Now, certainly, I've considered that idea a long time ago. Um, and yeah, you're probably right that that's an issue. Um, but I don't think that other chess servers are able to do any better. Um, at least those that have open source code. Uh, it's really difficult to do better. On the other hand, you can kind of sort of detect um, when that happens. I'm not... so... the way you detect it is see, like, who's watching the games, and... Yeah. Yeah, it'd probably be best, yeah, to go join that channel and see, like, if they have any ideas as to how to stop or detect the vector. You really can't stop it. You have to just detect it and react when it happens. I don't think... it's funny, um... About a year ago, I was working on a chess interface to the free internet chess server and accidentally exploiting this vector because my code was improperly escaped. Um, and uh, I got detected for that. And I explained to them, guys, it's okay. I'm not trying to win any rating points. I'm not trying to win anything. I promise you I'm going to resign the game. Um, and I'm working on this bug and just bear with me a little longer while I fix it. <laughs> That's basically what it came down to. Like The free internet chess server folks very quickly caught on. Um, granted you could... my uh, exploitation of the bug was pretty obvious in that I had a zero move time every move, um, which really stood out. It's not like I was attempting to hack them. But, yeah, it'd be interesting to know, like, to what degree that could be detected and what could be done about it. Um, God, this color scheme, it's awful. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's pretty easily detected, but yeah, I guess they should at least know about it. So yeah, the, the IRC channel, in fact, I think you can get at it this way too. Just look, go to um, this site here. I think that redirects you over to Freenode if you can't find your way to Freenode some other way. <sighs> okay, so this is all. La, 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 la. Whatever. Um. So. I'm just going to try to stick with this unless I need to go deeper. Ooh, ah, oh, it's so fancy. It's got a hit refresh, hit refresh workflow, powerful console and build tools, type safety, testing tools, and IDE support for Eclipse and IntelliJ. Scale predictably. Modern web and mobile. Okay, that's cool. Uh, 
Um, get started with tutorials. Hooray! Oh. Let's see. Can I turn on Windows Narrator again? <laughs> oh. How does he start talking? Exiting Mary Rick. Desktop. Exiting Mary Rick. Desktop. Why is he not reading the page? That's I'm most quiet. I'm very disappointed. No, he just said the word desktop. And then he quit. Maybe it's an image. <laughs> it's not an image. I can drag and highlight over the text and copy. They have it. really good CSS maps on the image. I mean, they'd have to print out each individual character as a separate image for. So basically, turn it into a PDF. Um, yeah. Basically. So, play Scala intro. It's basically all I'm looking for right now. So we're looking at Scala. Um, being built by SBT, a simple build tool. Deployed, um, working with the, um, what's this framework again? This is Play Framework, um, which is built on top of AKKA. Um, and somehow I've landed myself on typesafe.com. So Play Framework redirects to typesafe which has the tutorial about how to use all this stuff. There's just a dozen layers involved here, but we're peeling the onion. We're going. All right. Um, no, I... Dude, you should be able to explain to me, like, how this works without me typing things in. Yep, yep, yep. Ah, la la la. Um, no, that's not a real tutorial if it requires me to install something. Okay, maybe I'm a little bit biased, but this whole create a project and we'll show you how you can change lines of code within your project and then tell you that you've been through tutorial experience is just kind of cheesy. Um, I'm not impressed. Okay. So maybe I just want to go to the official documentation that talks about how this works. Uh, and how does this differ from other platforms? Here we go. Installing play, creating a new application using the console. ID anatomy of an application. Chapter 5. This is a good starting point. Don't know why they made it chapter 5. You have to have the first four chapters telling you how to install the damn thing, and then chapter five tells you what it is that you've done. I don't like that. It's not pedantic at all. It's not. Um, it's not pedagogical. Um, So, let's see. Well, I guess this tells you like how things are deployed or where they're all at. Um, so there's app assets, app controllers. Okay. It's nice that there's a clean taxonomy explaining where things are supposed to be. But what is it that configures where 
what calls the application controllers. Okay, fine. We'll go back to creating a new application. Yeah, yeah. You're showing me how to type commands into a console. Um, I mean, seriously, just tell me how it is that these things work. Like, when I'm reading that book, Spring in Action, it explains to me what is Spring. It's a container for dependency injection. I don't see any kind of definitions per se, other than this taxonomy. Um, so, scrolling through all that, SBT layout, play tutorials, uh, I don't want to go to those because they're not helpful. Let's see, can you direct me towards something better? I could buy all these books. Pretend I know what I'm doing. Um, detailed topics. The build system. Okay, so I've... Oh, is this part of play? Okay, so the play uh, uses SBT, but SBT is separate. And I learned that already, but okay, play is working on top of that. Uh, at least that gives me some idea of what's the container of the application. Um, there's a build.sbt file. See, this is something that should have been in chapter one, explaining that, you know, all this stuff. Um, now, I, get, I understand that this is a little bit tricky, but it's in this complexity that a lot of fascinating things can happen. Um, let me just peek at this build.sbt file. It's got to be here somewhere, right? Okay. Well, there's a few. Um, there's actually three SBT files. Whoops. What have we here? Ha! Ha! Oh, Z Nation. Let's behave. Let's behave. So... Um... So already, assumption number one about the taxonomy, the project's borked in that. Um, oh, okay, so when I use activator, that creates a build.sbt file, but doesn't mean that I necessarily need to have one in my root directory. Um, just that this is one way to use a play project or a play application. Um, Okay, play plugin for SBT. Maybe I should just take a look at some of these and see like how they're all defined. Um, or I could search for what in this entire uh, directory uses AI controller, but that's no fun. Um, let's start this journey the fun way. Okay, so... Yeah, we're using the play plugin, obviously. We're learning all the things, so okay. So resolvers, um, it's just using a, I guess that must be a pretty standard resolver. Um, huh, Scala Chess version 4.1, okay. 
that's that's a dependency. Um, oops, I'm not intending to change anything in this file. Uh, there's also the Swiss system, which I guess enumerates its own dependencies. Um, so. Let's see, I mean, this. Um, <laughs> found an error in the documentation? Yeah, I found an error. The error is that it's not telling me what I want to know. Does that count? Um, I want to know how it is that um, SBT chooses to use my controllers when it chooses to use them. I took a look at the routes file and I see that when requests are given to various routes that um, the AI is expected to respond, but what is sending out the requests in the first place? Maybe this isn't part of um, what's going to be documented here. Um, it just seems really weird that I don't know. Something's sending requests out to the AI server, which happens to be the same as the actual LeechS instance server. Um, I am getting a better appreciation of how play works and how it's built and such, but um, I'm a little confused. Well, more than a little bit. Hacking play. Ooh, you can build your own documentation and test things. So, yeah. I think what this just means is that, so we've taken a look here, determined that this controllers.ai.move is what causes um, the AI to make a move. Now, how do I originate a request going to AI slash move that results in this? I'm not so clear on the details of that. Um, we're going to try good old grep. Prepare to be disappointed. Oh, or not. Um, okay, so uh, see—is there a config file that defines that? Nope. Star dot star. Interesting. Um, fun stuff, eh? Let me clear the screen and do that search again so there's a little bit less noise. All right. Maybe this is the point where I let you guys vote on which file I look at next. Because that's the interactive thing to do, right? Oh. Um, been okay. I'm doing fine. Um, one thing I really want to get working, though, is I'd like um, to be able to play rated games. Like, here I've got my name, here I've got Stockfish. Um, it'd be nice if I could get that to all do exactly what I want. Which is not so simple, but I want to be able to play rated games against Stockfish and verify that it's working properly um, and test it out against maybe older versions or newer versions or other versions of Stockfish. Um, so see here's a thing AImon.js that probably is a AI monitoring system. Um, yeah, 
Let's nix the star dot star requirement there. Um, just see like everything in general that references uh, AI dot or AI slash move. So I see the target directory calls out this AI slash move, but I thought this target directory was generated code. Um, is that not generated code? You know, the one page that would actually be able to tell me whether or not that's generated code is something I just closed. Let me go find it again. Apparently they don't use the word taxonomy for this. They use detailed topics. Uh, that's not it. It is somewhere here. We'll find it. Maybe I need to watch my own stream to see where it is that this file was. There's the module directory. Uh, anatomy. That's the word they use. It's not a bad word. Okay, but target. Generated stuff. As I suspected. Okay, so what the crap? How does this get generated? Or is this not generated code? This reverse routes.scala. How could that possibly be generated? Maybe that's just not intended for consumption by client code. Um. Play framework reverse routes. Can also generate the stuff. Okay. Okay. Apparently that's just a thing that it does. So that indeed is generated code. Um, still doesn't answer the question of what it is that initiates the request. Like I can see that when I make a move, somehow Plain Framework initiates a request to the engine. Um, and I'd rather not have to open up the source code to figure out how that all works, but maybe I have to. Um, Confused. Um, hmm. I mean, okay, let's take a look at this AI monitoring script. Let's get past some of that up there. Okay, URL is equal to that stuff. Um, and we've got an error, print out error.
I guess that just pulls the AI server to make sure it's there. It all does is JavaScript, and it doesn't in any way integrate with the other stuff that's going on. So that's not important. Um. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I didn't think that, that would be the most successful search ever. Um. Let me just focus on app again and focus on module. Because that's where most of the useful code seems to be located. Um. Okay. The other thing I can look at is. Um, Again, I need to go back to play, play framework anatomy. Well, 2.0, 2.4. So application sources, a script. We've got configuration files, distribution, public assets more configuration files, libraries, logs, and generated stuff, and a test directory. And that pretty well sums it up. Um, I'm going to bookmark this before I close it again. So next time I won't have to spend as much time looking for it. Um, but yeah, this continues to validate my opinion that um, either the app directory or the modules directory should contain something somewhere, somehow, that um, says when it's the AI's move, tell the AI to move. I would be kind of stunned if it were the JavaScript here. There's no way that... Yeah, no, this client couldn't possibly request for the AI server to move. It's something done on the Leechess server that requests the AI server to make a move, but what and where? Um, That's not it. Um, I'll take another look at this again. Maybe there's some hidden mystery. This extends Leela controller and defines move and analyze. Um, I'm starting to think that Leela controller is kind of important here. I mean, Leela controller is just a controller that's under this um, project. And I could see wanting to register. Oh, well, yeah, of course. So I think this is what gets summoned when a request gets sent off. But what initiates the request then? Um, that's the tricky part. at just how games work in general, right? Maybe there's something we can learn here. Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of code. Um, 
Where do I start? Oh, I think there's a game module, right? Yeah, let's try the game module. Uh, but before I get too deep into that, let me just skim through. There's modules AI, which doesn't originate any of this stuff. There's analyze, API, blog, bookmark, chat, chess, common coordinate, DB, donation, evaluation forum, forum search, game, game search, history, hub, internationalization, importer, insight, lobby, memo, message, mod, monitor, notification, opening, play ban, pref, push, puzzle, QA, rating, I wonder what QA is, you know, rating, relation, report, round, search, security, setup, shut up, symbol, site, socket, Swiss system, target, team, team search, timeline, tournament, TV, user, video, wiki, and world map. None of those really stand out other than game. Oh, don't mean to view that. Let's change directory to the game source code directory. And um, somewhere in here will lie some information that points us in the right direction. Maybe not the complete answer, but hopefully something to get us going. Actually, I forgot. There is one AI setting in the configuration file somewhere. Um, don't want to show any of that configuration stuff on screen or on stream, so let me break this off for a second. You guys will have to make do with that while I take a quick look at um, the configuration file, which has some secret info in it. Um, so there's I did change a little bit of the AI stuff, but nothing relevant here. Um, obviously, I didn't change where it thought the AI server was located. Let me take a look at the other top secret configuration file. I really doubt that there's any AI secrets here. Um, okay. Ah, so the thing I'm looking for is called Endpoint. Yeah, so unless I'm missing anything, I need to look for the keyword Endpoint. It's a very special word. Um, Apparently there's also a callback underscore URL, um, which I guess is the domain for feedback after the AI is done analyzing. It initiates a request back to the server containing the answer it came up with. That's some fancy stuff. Um, so. At least I think that gives me some information as to how these requests are initiated and what happens in response to them. Um, so let me drop this back here. Let's, let's look back here. Grip. Is it endpoint? Yeah. And just look for scale files that mention the word endpoint. Okay. Well, that's informative in some ways. 
more than others. Um, so, all right. Um, maybe I should take another look at my routes file. get AI slash move. Maybe that is something that's triggered in JavaScript after all. Maybe the way that works is that the client requests of the server that the AI needs to make a move. Just completely backward from how I thought it would be, but maybe this is how it's actually done. Um, and that in response to that, maybe the server does something. If that were the case, then that would mean that an AI versus AI game wouldn't really be possible because uh, you would need a client to watch the game for the game to happen. Like, AI moves couldn't be generated unless the client requested for AI moves to happen. Um, Okay, let's try one more parameter here. Hmm. So what's the point of all this code, or some of this code existing? Oh, okay, I see. So here we have client.scala, which is calling ws.url with query string yada yada, which to me looks like this is how you initiate a request. Um, so if I go here, and I just keep searching for that endpoint, okay. I'm a little confused about some of the details here and that how can there only be one endpoint? If you have multiple AI servers, how's that all done? Um, but this says a future move result is equal to send request. Um, so we construct a request and then map it to move result. Um, I assume at some point the request actually gets executed, but I'm curious what queues this up. Something's calling client.move. Also, what is this weird thing that appears in the middle of my screen? Apparently it went away, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, so yeah. I guess what I'm going to have to look for, this is going to get kind of ugly, um, is move parentheses. That actually didn't generate as many requests as I thought it would. Just kind of a huge relief in one way, and I don't know. So, which of these pertain to what I'm looking at? 
I think first of all, I'm not looking case insensitive. I am looking for um, a very specific case of that function name. So, um, oh, here we are. Here we've defined an actor. We're all actors on the stage, and yada yada. You've heard this spiel. Uh, so, uh, wait, what? What is this? Is this an actual chessboard that's moving pieces? It's not quite what I was looking for, you know? I was looking for somebody demanding that an AI make a move. Um, okay, so here we have board dot move. Yeah, wait, this doesn't match up with what I was looking at. Oh, this is private def move. Um, that's not exactly it. So let's take a quick look back at the AI at scale of five. So, yeah, basically when AI.move gets called, um, the server sends out a request to a server to make a move. Um, and what needs to happen is that, well, I still need to figure out what's calling this. Hmm, I might have to put a uh, packet capturing device somewhere inside the middle of this and see, like, exactly what is the, um, the client transmitting to the server. Is this move request coming from the client? Because that, it's pretty amazing if that is what's happening. Um, I guess at this point, I kind of have to... Okay, let me see if I can dismiss the console. I think there's a way to do that. Yes, yeah, so let's hide the console down there. Um, and I don't know, somehow trace what it is that gets sent out. Okay, so if I do this... It's got to recompile some things first, but um, eventually it's going to come back somehow. The move request comes from the client. So you're saying like, okay. Where, how do I prove that? I can look at what resources I am importing and see what functions they define, but um, I was kind of first hoping to see just... Oh, to capture a new timeline, hit the button that says record. What about network? Okay, so network log is logging, but timeline, sure, whatever, let's record. If I hit back, I hit forward, and I say done. Look at all this stuff. Um, I have no idea what any of this means, but somewhere in here must have been a request. Um, here's all our resources. There's our local storage. Uh, that's not it. Where's our JavaScript? Sources, assets. Uh, who knows what that is? JavaScripts. Yeah, no, I get. <clears throat> oh, you're saying it's a WebSocket call? All right, so DEPS. 
dot min and big dot js. Let's take a look at deps dot min. Uh, So, okay, there are a few things called move. I have no idea if any of those is the one that I'm looking for, but I'm going to wager no. Um, let's go over to big.js and see, like, where is move used? It's too bad I don't know how to search. Play.move, but the, I think that just goes whatever that's that's really weird that they call it that um, cause it says var manually set volume is equal to this so oh it makes a move sound okay that, that's not at all confusing let's just call everything move um, but yeah I don't think that yeah I mean, obviously something here is generating the request that says, you know what, I've moved. Uh, actually, one little hint I could have is I could take a look at um, some of these advanced features like move confirmation, right? Obviously, when you're done confirming your move, something gets sent to the server. Maybe it's your move, maybe it's your move plus a request that the opponent should move. Probably not the latter. Probably it just communicates your move. And the server has to know um, that your opponent, who happens to be a AI, needs to move. Um, okay. WebSocket calls aren't visible from Chrome. But yeah, I assume the WebSocket call is nothing more than um, just E5 and however long it took me to play it. Um, I'm assuming it's not E5 and then a separate request to ask the opponent to move. That would be kind of absurd, ridiculous, insane. I don't know. Pick your adjective of choice. Um, Plus, whatever works here has got to be compatible with uh, the LeechUs API, right? Where's our API documentation? Where's our documentation? Here's a wiki. That's not an API. LeechUs API. API questions. Let's see. Where's the API? It's not there. Is it over here? Okay, just ask Ornikar, because he knows all the answers. Now, um, is there an HTTP AI API for playing? Um, okay, so there's a private HTTP AI. Somebody did something very silly with this 7-zip archive they uh, decided to group these files together, zip all of them individually into .7z files, and then put that in a 7z file. Mm -hmm. You know, just to compress it. Yeah. I don't know if that provides a particular advantage. I'm pretty sure you know that it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, where's the API? We've got an API somewhere. Seem to have lost the API. Anyhow. Um, yeah. Just, you know, this is one person's perspective about how, whether or not it's a good idea um, to have a public API for play. I have a different opinion. But that's not really that relevant because all I need at the moment is just a way to run one or more engines um, as users. So, 
Whoa. Let me search. <laughs> That's hilarious how the top search came up there as the head admin. As I was just searching for Leechus API and it substitutes in his name because people say, I'll just talk with him. He'll tell you how it works. He's kind of on vacation at the moment. Doesn't want to be disturbed as much. Um, hmm. <laughs> Documentation. All right. Found it. Wait. Oh. Okay, guys. You know how you find the API? You go to this page and you scroll and you scroll and you scroll and do a little more scrolling and there it is. Okay. That wasn't so hard. Uh... So there's some extended API also. Yeah, you're right, it is in the README. Um, okay, and yeah, I was looking at this routes file also. Okay. I do appreciate that at least they commented the routes file. And um, separated it pretty well. Um, hmm. So, huh. So there's no way to search for games that are still active, I guess. That's interesting. Um, so where's... Oh, so I guess they're not publishing an official API telling you how to automatically make moves. Um, so that's what they mean by private. <laughs> that they have a private API in one person's words there. Um, which doesn't actually make sense. It's a contradiction in terms, but anyway. Um, so that's cool. Yeah, I, I actually don't need any of this. I was just idly amused and thinking of what somebody else was needing. Um, he was saying that he wanted to see just all the active games, and that way he could figure out which ones are the most popular and which ones he wants to show um, to his audience. Uh, starting with just getting a list of all the active games. It sounds like a reasonable request, but anyhow. Um, so, yeah, there's no documentation saying what generates the request. Um, and if we take a look, it's any one of all these things that's generating this request here. Something here somewhere. Looks like a get request. Um, I suppose I could look for UCI moves. Thank you. Oh, no, that's that's a request. Where is that even going? That must be uh, I don't know.
Yeah, there's really two things at play here. Um, one of them is the AI cluster, and the second of them is the AI um, aspect of the main server, which just delegates to the cluster. But yeah, I think that this... Well, let me take another look at the routes file. AI move. Uh, QA ID A move. Uh -huh. I guess... I'm not sure what QA refers to, unless that's some kind of testing stuff. Um, in which case, that's kind of cool. But, yeah. Uh, let's search for game. Game delete. Import game. Send game. Whatever it is that does IO between um, the player and the server is pretty well masked. I'm really I don't really care how that kind of transmission occurs. I just care that when it's the AI's move, that it makes a move. So I need some way to initiate this request to AI slash move. But only when it's the AI's turn. Oh, QA is the Q uh, question and answer section. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so... I think I just need to uh, start looking in our game directory. Somehow, somewhere here, there's. Well, there's POV.scala, which is a point of view, presumably of a player. Um. Let's search for this. Is my turn. Okay. So that's really the only function that uses this. Define priority as um, all that stuff. Oh, that must be for. Well, I was going to say de for determining what goes on the Leech STV. But maybe there's some other reason for this priority stuff. In any event, that's um, this is not telling me anything about when it's the opponent's move. Um, there's game js dot scala. Take a look at what that does. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's take a look at where player is used. Okay, it's used all over the place. It makes sense for a game 
uh, directory that or package that player would be used pretty frequently. Um, Huh. There's got to be some way to say when it's the AI's move, tell the AI to make a move. Like, for example, over here, if I make a move, it moves. On the other hand, when I'm playing against a user who I happen to have created and said that this is an engine user, you know, it'd be nice for it just to make moves on its turn. Um, obviously not all engine users will um, automatically have stockfish making moves for them but for now that's like what I want to do is just have any engine user automatically move by stockfish making the move and then later I can configure or not which um, AI or engine users actually are driven by stockfish and what parameters they're driven with and so forth Step one is just ensuring that, you know, if a player is an engine user, that the engine does do something when it's that player's turn. Do I have to define an attribute AI level? Is that it? Is this all just data driven? Hmm. So, let's see, wait, first back up, back up, so I'm looking here, AI level is defined, so you know, maybe I just, um, I'm going to just go into the Stockfish profile and add in this attribute AI level, um, maybe that's the answer to all my hopes and dreams and prayers and stuff. I don't know. So, 
Wait, I thought I saw a second ago something that looked like an attribute name. So obviously there's this is AI thing, right? And it says AI level dot is defined. Okay, great. Uh, AI level is just an attribute of player. Um, make generates a player that has a given ID and color and AI level. Um, uh, maybe player make is... Hmm. Maybe that's not quite what I'm looking for. Or maybe I just want to get rid of this make method altogether or something. Um, I think I'm getting closer though. So... I think make is used by... Well, somewhere. Um, okay. Uh, so is there some way I can just override value of AI level here somewhere. Yeah, so like here we see AI level is equal to option int, whereas other things like is winner, is offering draw, and so forth are options. Um, well, some of these are options, like is winner. Um, is an option but it has a default value. Last draw offers an option but again it has a default value. Uh, option just means that it's possible this may have a value, this might not have a value. I think I could just default this to 8. Um, but then I'm curious about... Um, obviously that would apply to all players including myself and thus disable me from making any moves. So I gotta figure out um, how do I generate a player instance with an AI level, um, but only if the player is an engine. Uh, that's gonna take a little while to figure out. Um, which probably means that this is as reasonable a breaking point as any to stop and take a breath of air and figure out what the heck's going on. Um, okay, see there's a player, there's a player user. Yeah, this gets the user... Hmm. That's kind of cool. So... Yeah, I think this helps solidify my design of how players and users relate. So here where I created this stockfish, this should really just be a stockfish uh, level 8 or something. And there should be multiple stockfish accounts and each one of them should be um, its own user. I think that's the deal. That there should be stockfish one through stockfish eight, um, and that way, if you go and look in the leaderboards, it'll get listed separately for each instance of the engine. Um, and. Um, make it possible to set this thing AI level and such a whenever engine is set and AI level is set then moves get played automatically 
So, yeah, I think that 90 some percent of the code that needs to be done is already there. It's just generating the last 10 percent of the code is going to require figuring out how this 90 percent works and how to leverage it and make use of it. Um, Yeah, my more recent changes were a little more transparent. Um, so let's just take a look at some of those. Um, let's see. So you know, I got rid of the word lame in a whole bunch of places and replaced it with the word booster. Basically saying that, you know, um, it's okay for engine players to be players. Uh, they can't, shouldn't be excluded from playing rated games just because it's an engine. That code change is pretty easy. It was just a find and replace of wherever the code was saying, don't allow this player to play if they happen to be labeled as an engine. You just have to turn all that stuff off. And now you still get all the nice warnings that, hey, this player uses computer assistance and stuff. Um, and yeah, potentially I'm going to go back and make sure that users are unable to play against engines if that's what really, really what Leechus wants, at least on their official site. Yeah, I'll put that in place, but. Um, I think some of the fun of this is being able to play against various engines and see uh, what their ratings are and how well they perform. Um, so how's these other attributes? Of, well, anyhow, yeah, I've got plenty of questions. Um, most about this player class or object. Uh, I guess they do call it a class. Some other things they call objects, but they call this one a class. Um, that's pretty classy. So, I guess, yeah, this is how they separate out their user information from the player information. Um, And I need to figure out how best to extract the AI level, which is not going to be this attribute anymore. Um, it's going to be somewhere else. Or there will be some other mechanism for populating it. Um, but, yeah, I think most of the remaining changes, if not all, will have to be done in this file. And um, hopefully it won't be too bad to implement once I figure out what's going on. That's the hope. That's the dream. We'll see how realistic that is. Um, in the meantime, I think I might take a break and take a look at what other people are up to and get back to this in a bit. Um, so I guess I'll see you around.